Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, section 543 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. Here I cover the multiple expansion of the vector potential. And um, if I go too fast, you can respond, you can rewind. If you have questions or comments, you can put them in a uh, comment or the video response below. And be sure to like and share this with your friends so that people can find out about it. Uh, multiple expansions. The reason why we did this is we wanted to to basically derive formulas for uh, what electric fields and potentials would be far away from some configuration of charge that basically simplifies all the complicated math that, that you'd have with real world configurations. And there's, there's a similar um, uh, reasoning behind why we want to do a multiple expansion of the vector potential A. So this starts with the whole theorem that you know 1 over R is really equal to 1 over r, the sum from 0 to infinity of r prime over r to the n power and the Lagrangian of cosine theta, where, let's draw a picture here, so we have you know some current charge there, um, r prime is the vector from the origin to some little current piece, and then R vector is from the origin to the point that we're trying to calculate whatever for and then this R curly is the vector the difference between the two okay so um, basically we're going to get terms that will um, not depend on R this R but only on the R prime and then we can calculate just multiplying by factors of R so um, the vector potential can be rewritten as over 4 pi closed loop integral 1 over curly r dl vector uh, which can be rewritten mu naught i over 4 pi the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over r to the n plus 1 then the integral, the closed loop integral of r prime to the n and the Lagrangian of cos theta. If that's not legible, it's my fault. Um, which, when you expand this out, looks like the monopole term. So we have mu naught i over 4 pi times the monopole term, which is 1 over r. Closed loop integral of, this is the first power, uh, a zeroth power actually, zero zero, so that's just DL. Okay, this is the monopole. Then the dipole term, one over R squared, the integral of um, R prime cos theta DL vector. Okay, this is the dipole. This is what you get when you have little loops of wire plus mu naught i over 4 pi, 1 over r cubed, the closed integral of r prime to the third, to the square, square, and the second Lagrangian, third Lagrangian, 3 halves cosine squared, theta minus 1 over half dl vector, and you get more and more of those. Each one increases by a factor of 1 over r, and the integral becomes increasingly um, complicated to solve. Now the interesting fact is that the monopole term, because there are no monopoles, is zero. Okay, monopole term is zero. So the integral over some loop, um, the so you basically if you add up all the vectors as you go around this loop, the sum is going to be zero. Um, so anyway, the so the most dominant term is a dipole. This is the term that everybody pays attention to. It's also compared to um, electrostatics, um, deceptively more simpler than the electrostatic the static dipole term. So let's take a look more at what that looks like. So the dipole term of the a vector is equal to mu naught i over four pi r squared the closed loop integral of r prime times cosine theta dl vector okay which is simply rewritten as 
if you remember your basic vector algebra, closed loop integral of the r prime uh, r hat dot r prime vector. That's r prime cos theta, because theta was the angle between r prime and r and dl. Okay, so we can rewrite this integral into more useful form by doing this, what he calls unlovely manipulation. And I sat there staring at this book for a while, just wondering what in the heck he was doing. Um, it actually makes sense when you think about it, but you kind of have to, you know, suspend your disbelief for a moment and follow him through all the way to the end. So, the differential of r hat dot r prime vector, um, r prime vector, so a tiny change in this, what is this equal to? Well, that's just r hat times dr vector, the r prime vector, um, r prime plus r hat dot r prime vector, dr prime vector. Okay, what did he do here? Well, he just took the derivative of this. You know, this one's constant. You know, we're not changing r as we go through this integral. We're changing r prime. So it's the derivative of this times the derivative of that plus the derivative of that. So, um, so the integral of this, which becomes the integral of this plus that. Um, has to be equal to zero. So the integral of r hat dot dr vector r of the prime vector plus the integral um, oh wait we have r hat dot r prime vector dr prime vector the integral of this has to be equal to zero. Let's just sit on that for a while. Um, why? Well, if if you were to go around the circle, adding up these little components, halfway around you'd get a sum, but when you come back around to the beginning, you get nothing. You just get what you started with. Um, ponder that for a while. This is kind of the key to everything here. Um, okay, back cab rule. So we're going to has to be equal to negative the same integral r hat dot r prime vector d r prime vector. Okay. These two are equal. Um, well, they're they're opposites of each other. So the back cab rule. So we get r. I really don't know that I'm adding anything to this. You got to read the book, and um, this is something you got to think about for a while before you really get to understand what's going on. But anyway, I'll carry on. So um, we take this. Use a back cab rule. So back. So a cross b cross c is equal to um, b, that's a r prime vector, dot, or b times back a c, a c. So r hat dot uh, dr prime vector um, minus cab. So C D R prime vector times R hat dot R prime vector. Okay, I don't know that we actually made any gains here. Um, uh, get rid of this one right here. Okay, what is that equal to? Well.
Would you believe me? Ah, forget it. You won't believe me. Um, so he says this is all equal to negative 2, the integral of r hat dot r prime vector uh, times d r prime vector. Where did he pull that out of? Um, I don't know. I don't know where he found that, but it's interesting nonetheless. And um, anyway, so dr prime vector is the infinitesimal displacement vector we have always called dl vector. So this is just dl vector. R hat dot r vector prime d. Oh, that's right. He pulled this out of up here, where um, this guy. Remember this guy, this guy, this guy, is equal to negative this guy, right? So combining those two, you get this. That's this guy. This guy. See the r prime over here is just moved to the left, and this guy is equal to negative that, so it's negative two of those. And so dr prime vector is just the dl vector of this whatever loop we're doing, and so we get the fancy smancy result that um, this integral up here is equal to negative one half of this integral here. Well, we can pull out this of this integral right here. Right, so we can do this. So we write this uh, dipole moment as equal to mu naught i over uh, four pi r squared times negative one half of r vector r r r hat cross closed loop integral of r prime vector cross d l vector. All right. Um, which you can more compactly rewrite um, if you take m. So we're going to introduce this guy m, which is going to be 1 half of the current times the integral of r prime vector cross dl vector, this, this guy right here. And we're going to take the backwards cross product. So we're going to do u naught over 4 pi r squared, and then we do m vector cross r hat. Let's put the r squared over here instead of over there. Okay? So this m vector is this guy. Since we're reversing the order, now we take the negative of it. So this is this is kind of the key takeaway. So we have this magnetic, magnetic dipole moment. These two work together. The magnetic dipole moment. Um, what is this one half r cross dl stuff? What does that look like? Well, the 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 secret the secret sauce is that when you have some loop you're going around, what's the area of this triangle? Well, this is dl vector. This is the r prime vector. This cross that is the area of the parallelogram. So one half of that is the area of the triangle. Okay, so that is one half of the um, I'm sorry, one half of r vector cro cross dl vector. Okay, so when you do an integral all the way around the loop, what's the total r cross dl? Well, this is just the area of that. So this becomes the area. That's the area. So we can rewrite this as m is equal to i a. Okay, very, very easy to, um, oh, m vector is equal to a vector, the direction of the area. So um, this is actually one of those wonderful results. So m vector is equal to i a vector. Um, and it's, it's so fundamental and so wonderful that people often forget where it comes from and they think that this is the beginning of everything. Uh, because you can work backwards from here and get pretty much anything you want. So example 13 is next. Thanks. Bye.